So changing gears a little bit, moving on to RNA sequencing library preparation. Um, in this case, this is usually done to look at gene expression to identify which genes are turned on or off in a given sample. And most of the times people are really interested in the protein coding uh, transcripts or messenger RNAs. These are polyadenylated transcripts, uh, but they only make up a small portion of the total amount of RNA. Most of the RNA is made up of ribosomal RNA. And this is generally things that are um, undesirable that people don't want to sequence and waste their sequencing dollars. And so to prepare RNA sequencing libraries, there are a couple of extra steps. One is a depletion or enrichment step. The second is conversion of RNA to DNA because the Illumina sequencers only work for DNA. You can't sequence RNA directly on these platforms. And then the last step, again, is to add sequencing adapters to complete the uh, DNA library preparation of that converted RNA. And I'm gonna go over two methods today, um, the TrueSeq style library prep method for RNA and also a method called SmartSeq. But there are many, many other types of library preparation for RNA. We just don't have time to go over all of them uh, in this talk. So first, we have to do some RNA enrichment to select for the polyadenylated messenger RNA transcripts. And there are two methods to do this. The first method is to take advantage of the fact that messenger RNA has a poly-A tail on the 3' end. And we can use a poly-A capture technique that uses beads that have oligo-DT on the surface. And these beads are able to capture the messenger RNA through this interaction with the poly-A tails. These can be washed so that the ribosomal RNAs um, are, um, are washed away, and then you elute the poly-A messenger RNA from the beads and go through a library preparation. A second method is instead of capturing poly-A RNA, you can deplete ribosomal RNA. And there are a couple different methods of doing this, but the most common method right now is using a probe a DNA panel of probes that will bind to your messenger, that will bind to your ribosomal RNAs that also have a biotin handle on the end. So you go through a hybridization reaction where these probes will bind to ribosomal RNA but not bind to poly A RNA. And then you use magnetic beads to pull these out of the solution and you're left with poly A um, messenger RNA in your tube that you can go through library preparation. So with the TrueSeq sample preparation, what you do is you take your enriched RNA and then you fragment that RNA into small bits that are appropriately sized for Illumina sequencing. And then you prime them so that you can undergo a reverse transcription reaction. Reverse transcription is a process where you take RNA and then use uh, primers and a reverse transcriptase enzyme to generate a cDNA copy of that RNA. After this process, you have um, single-stranded DNA, and you go through a process called second-strand synthesis so that you convert um, your single-stranded DNA into a double-stranded DNA that can go into library preparation. So once you have your double-stranded library uh, or your double-stranded DNA uh, that originally came from RNA, you can go through that TrueSeq sample DNA preparation that we went over earlier to generate a sequencing library. The next method of RNA library preparation that we'll go over is called SmartSeq. And this uses some of the same enzymes as the TrueSeq style RNA preparation, but it has one advantage in that you don't have to do uh, RNA enrichment step. And this is because the reverse transcription reaction is primed by a oligo-DT. And so this will, again, only bind to your messenger RNAs that have these poly-A tails at the end. And you go through this reverse transcription reaction and so it'll make this copy of DNA using RNA as a template. One special thing about this process is that it uses a reverse transcriptase that has a template switching activity. It'll add a couple of non-templated C bases at the end of the cDNA, and this will allow a template switch oligo that's also present in the reaction uh, that contains a couple of G bases. So these G bases can hybridize on to those, T ba those C bases that got added by the reverse transcriptase, and then the reverse transcriptase will use this template switch oligo as a template and it'll continue the reverse transcription reaction so that you wind up with a tagged cDNA that has handles on both ends depicted in green here. This cDNA can now be amplified and many copies can be made. And then this can go into a library preparation using either your TrueSeq style DNA library prep or your Nextera library preparation methods to generate a library. 
So with sample preparation, you uh, a lot of times are not working with just a single sample, you're working with many samples. Uh, for instance, if you want to compare the uh, transcriptional profiles of treated and untreated sample or healthy and diseased, uh, you have several different samples that you want to sequence together. And it can be really inefficient if each of those samples goes on to their own sequencing reaction because it can cost a lot of money. One thing that you can do with these Illumina sequencing libraries is within those adapters to get added to the ends of your inserts, you can have different barcode sequences uh, so that each sample gets a unique barcode. And that's depicted over here. So let's say we have a sample that's already bound to the flow cell, um, so it's already attached to the surface. The adapters are here and here. We can add two different barcodes or index sequences onto these Illumina libraries. Uh, they're called the I7 and the I5 sequences. And again, these can be unique for each different sample that you prepare. And these can be pulled together and run on the single sequencing run. And so during the sequencing process, what happens is you, um, the first read that you do is the insert read for read one. After you've done that, you can strip that away and then you could add on a sequencing primer to read this I7 index. So that'll hybridize on, and then you can do a couple sequencing cycles so that you get the barcode sequence for this molecule. Next, you flip the templates around so that this template becomes flipped and then bound on to the flow cell. So if you switch your orientation, and then um, you can sequence the second index with a couple of cycles, and then after that's done, you can strip that away and then sequence your other end of your insert. And you can link all of these sequences together, so your insert reads and your barcode reads, because they're all constrained to the same area of that flow cell. And then you can use those barcode sequences to separate your reads into your different sample pools. So again, your healthier disease, your treated, your untreated.